Uh, this is a new episode of We Are 757, the show. We got the homie Shaw, Antoine Shaw. So how you been, though, man? Can't complain. Uh, trying to get out and hit the uh, Indy River track up every day, about two miles. Take the kids with me. Uh, trying to stay active. The coronavirus. How's been? How you been dealing with it? Oh, man. Uh, sticking to the news, watching the news. Making sure when I go out, I got on the mask. Well, not all the time, but I'm a heart transplant patient, so I'm supposed to have a mask on at all times, but it's kind of hard. But, um, you know, just just going to the grocery store. I only go two places now, the grocery store and um, and the Indian River track, and that's it. And oh. then I'm always with the kid. I'm, I'm always with, a, with one of my kids, so, you know, just keeping my circle even smaller and tighter. Mm. How you been making out through this thing, man? I'm all right, man. Trying to figure out stuff to post, man. Like, I don't know what to post. I'm trying to make, like, mixes for uh, IG, yeah. and IG and YouTube. But I still, my job is actually still open, so I still been working a lot as well. Like, I'm working, like, extra now because nobody there. And, you know, I'm, like, right. one of the healthiest people, I guess, working. So <laughs> I'm just working harder. Yeah, I can understand, man. It's, especially with all with all the, I know you're working and you got a lot of downtime. Mm -hmm. I've been putting together a lot of uh highlight reels too. Like uh one week I just went I, I gotta do Jasha. I think that's what I'm gonna do next. I've done Indian River, Western Branch, Lake Teller, um Isaiah from uh Princess Anne, mm -hmm. JJ from Lake Teller. Every day seems like a Saturday now. Uh -huh. So you just wake up, uh, do about two or three hours of editing, go hit the track up, hit the grocery store up, then it's back to the crib, back to working again. <laughs> I feel you. So uh, how did how did you get into the uh, video editing for the seven five? Well, it all started back in '96 when I was at North State. I was a business major, uh -huh. and uh, it was coming up on the uh, NBA playoffs. And I was such a Jordan fan, and I didn't own a pair of Jordans, but I always did. So uh, <laughs> what happened was um, I was like, yo, I want to create a tape or a highlight reel where Jordan never missed. And so that kind of rolled downhill and snowballed. And then um, uh, two years later, I got a, I got a, uh, I did a whole bunch of stuff at Norfolk State. Uh, people thought I was crazy because I was always walking around with a camera. Uh -huh. And I just was shoot, shooting everything. And so uh, two years later, I got a chance. There was a job opening in Lynchburg as a, um, as a video editor. So I went to Richmond the summer of 99. Yeah, no, the summer of 98. I'm sorry, the summer of 98. And uh, 90, no, I'm sorry, it was 99 because I, I'd start working. I left uh, Lynchburg and got a job at uh, Wavy TV in Portsmouth. And then um, once I got a, a job there editing, uh, the guy who actually showed me how to shoot, his name was Brian Parsons. Uh, and, he and, he, and he told me how to shoot, always have the action coming at you. You know, every time you see a highlight, uh, shoot, a, shoot a light or a scoreboard. So, you know, when you're editing and you come across a highlight, because back then, you know, I'm just shooting for highlights. Yeah. So, you know, I made the editing process a lot quicker. So, you know, um, he... As a matter of fact, Brian, that was my man, he took me to my first game when Jordan came back when he was playing with the Wizards. Mm. And, he and I, we went to go shoot a whole bunch of Redskins game. So that tightened my game up right there and, and gave me a chance to be on the field with a whole bunch of, you know, NFL players. And my dream was at that time to actually have somebody from uh, the NFL hit me on the sideline so <laughs> everybody nationally would be able to see me get punished <laughs> I would get up and do one of these. But the closest I came to that was, I don't know if anybody remembers, somebody might remember, when Clinton Portis was playing and he scored and he did a cartwheel. And you can see me in the background with my uh, with my FUBU outfit on. It was a maroon FUBU outfit. <laughs> and you see me with the camera. And my man, Ala Reese, who was locked up at the time, he got the New York Times and he actually sent me the picture because he got it when he was uh, locked up. Uh -huh. And he sent me the picture, and he was like, look at you in the back, hey, Shaw. And so, or Shaw Ball. So, you know, it's, it all started from then. Uh, Brian Parsons really put me on, showed me how to shoot, showed me what to shoot. Um, 
taught me the interviewing process. Uh, and uh, the biggest key to, uh, to being uh, legit in this field is always having good lighting and good sound. I know my lighting not good right now because this is the first time I did this. Uh -huh. I should have had my light in front of me instead of to the side of me. But I was running out of time, so I was just like, "This, let me set it up. <laughs> You're good. But, uh, yeah, so I've been in the game since 96. And um, from Wavy, I went to CBS. And CBS, I did the same thing I did at Wavy. I did a lot more sports. And then um, once I left CBS, I uh, started working with Andy Hilton at Recruit 757. And that's where I've been ever since. And, uh, you know, working with Andy has given me the opportunity uh, you know, to work with a lot of different, a lot of different high schools and travel up and down, you know, 95, uh, yeah. just to cover these kids. And, you know, I, I stay in my zone, you know, I, college is college. I like college, but I really like high school because it gives you the, it gives you the chance to see a kid before they take off. Like I remember, uh, shooting Percy Harvin when they went up, I forgot what team they played, right. okay. but it was here. Huh? Probably Oakton when they play Oakton. No, that when they, when they play Oakton, that was at Hampton. Remember, because the field got rained out, so they was just like, "We'll play that Hampton," because Hampton at that time was supposed to have a better field, but uh -huh. Hampton was just as bad. <laughs> so it was the game. It was the game they played before Hampton when he caught the pick. When uh, he caught a bomb from Kirby to start the game off, and then I don't know why this quarterback thought he could throw to Percy Harvin's side with, like, uh, five seconds left in the game. Man, Percy took that thing and went, like, almost 100 and some odd yards with it to end the game. And I should have been on the other end, but the game was so close because the team was just driving. They got inside the five. And I was like, well, just in case they catch a touchdown, let me get in the end zone. And I should have just stayed at the other end because Percy took that thing and took it the length of the field. And after that, I was the only one – I was the only one from this area to cover the game, so I was the only one to have the footage and the post-game interview after the game. So, you know, it was it was moments like that that really let me know, like, you know, this is my thing. I, I like staying here. And yeah. then, you know, I, I interview um, – I used to interview Dodo, who – uh, what's his name? What's Dodo Rodé? Dorian. Uh, yeah, Dorian. Dorian Finney. Uh -huh. all, the, all, the, all the Finney brothers, you know, you always hear the moms in the crowd at all the games, even when Ben yeah. was playing – and, uh, you know, up until now, like all the way up until Marion James and Malik Newton and um, uh, what's his name over there? Chauncey, uh, Chauncey Jenkins yeah. over there. That's my that's my wife's cousin. So, you know, it's I, I like what I, I really love what I do. I can if you like what you do, you don't. I mean, it's not don't a job. Like so. work. Yeah, right. Don't like work. You know, you can I can spend if. If I could sit here at my computer all day and work, I would. But I get up so I can get my legs some work, or at least about a half hour, 45 minutes, or hour and a half every day. Mm -hmm. But I could sit here all day and just edit. But that's how I got my start from Jordan. <laughs> uh -huh. Wanting to see a complete tape with Jordan making every shot until now. You know, it's it's, it's really cool. How was um, – when you say you say you played at Norfolk State, did you, uh, you play football? Yeah, I got a matter of fact, I started. What high school did you go to? Any river? Nah, I'm originally from Syracuse, New York, right? Okay. So uh, I graduated in 1994. And a guy named Antonio Owens, uh, who was in the reserves with my mother, he was also a, a college recruiter. And so what happened was he was getting a lot of athletes out of Syracuse who were at risk, and I was at risk. You know, I was the typical high school uh, jock. I wasn't a bad kid, uh -huh. but when you know when your father's not there to correct all your mistakes, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. So I made a lot of I made a lot of mistakes. None of them were detrimental to my future, but they were all mistakes a kid would make at that age. Uh -huh. And so, um, what he did was he was coming to North State. He was getting, and by the way. Anthony Owen, Antonio Owens got probably about 50, some 60 kids off the streets of uh, uh, Syracuse, New York, and got them into colleges all across the country. At that particular time, his daughter was going to Florida State for Hema Owens. She was going to Florida State, and he had another son named Nick Owens. Uh, I forgot where Nick went. 
but he got his son a scholarship as well. And so he got me, I, I didn't have the grades. I wasn't felon, but I just didn't have the right GPA. So he got me into Fort Union. And I lasted at four. I went to Fort Union in August. I was back home in the streets of Syracuse in August. <laughs> so uh, he, he didn't give up on me. And so he was uh, coming to Norfolk State, uh, coach the D-line. And him and another kid named Nick Patterson. And so uh, and Nick Patterson was also from Syracuse. So um, if, 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 through the grace of God, I had gotten into trouble as soon. I mean, I was – like I said, I went to Fort Union in August. I was back home in August, September, October. I think I call. I, was, I got in trouble in November. Then I got in trouble uh, shortly after that. Then I got in trouble again. I caught four cases in less than a year, mm. and uh, the last one was after I passed my ACT, which uh, I got a 17 exactly on my ACT. So that means I was eligible to uh, go to Norfolk State. So. I caught uh, a charge on that day for uh, <laughs> for just being wild. <laughs> and uh, when I came home, I said, I'm not leaving the house. So for probably um, probably about a month and a half, I didn't leave the house, man. I just stayed in the house because I knew once I went outside, I was going to get in more trouble. So I stayed in the house, played video games. I worked out by just running. And so then I got to Norfolk State in August of 95. And uh, on a full scholarship, football scholarship. And the first person I met when I got down here was um, Aaron Hawkins from Norfolk. And uh, that's my man to this day. And uh, so I just, when I came back and I knew if I didn't stay on the right path this time, what trouble really meant. I had already been kicked out of uh, prep school. I already caught four charges. I was like, I don't know how many more chances God going to give me until I start acting right. So uh, I went there and I chained myself to the weight room. I, all I did was lift. The whole first month I was there because school didn't start till you know, the last last week of August. So for three straight weeks, I just worked out and went to practice, worked out, went to practice, worked out and went to practice mm -hmm. until um, I got myself right. And uh, so I got myself right and then come to find out that I was ineligible for, to play my freshman year. So I had the red shirt. I red shirted, and then I came back my sophomore, junior year, and started. And then my junior year, I had gotten into some trouble, and I was suspended to the end of the season. And then I came back my senior year, and right around the end of my junior year, 90, 96, 97, 97 it had to be. It had to be 97 because that's when Jordan uh, came back, 98, something like that. Something like that. I can't remember the exact year. But something like that, uh, that's when I've, I really got into video editing, started making little clips for the football team, started making clips for uh, – I started producing shows. Um, I'll I send you the link to one of my old ones with uh, the running back at that time and uh, this kid named, kid named Preston Bray – or uh, Preston – I forgot P last name. I think it is Preston Bray. And um, – you know, we made a we made a, a spoof of a show, which uh, which which the other guy showed the college recruits coming in, saying, you know, this is one of the advantages of being in uh, production. So, you know, and that's how I got my start from football to editing. So, did, you didn't uh, try to play football professionally, or you didn't you didn't feel like that I was after man, it was. You know, I was I was doing I was on the right track until I got into trouble. Uh, then at that time, I had met my wife, and I kind of got settled. Okay. And I I really I mean I really got into up until I met my wife, I was really into football. Mm -hmm. Then I met then I started editing. I was really into editing, and then I met my wife, so I was into editing and football. And at that time, that's all I really wanted to do. Yeah. Work yeah. out, edit. And hang out with her. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, football, I had, you know, you get some injuries. And then you start to realize, like, you know, I love football, but my body, man, my body is hurting right now. And just let me get a break. And I just come back and see how I really feel about it. So what I did was, you know, I just, I just dove headfirst into uh, editing 
And then my wife got pregnant in 90, 97. She got pregnant in 97. And we had our first daughter in 98. And um, then I started really getting into editing and hanging out with her and my daughter. And um, eventually, football kind of phased out. I mean, I still love to watch it and shoot it. But so far as it's physically playing it, it was just like, you know, at that, that was the first time in my life that I didn't, I didn't love it as much as I did when I was 10. Okay, so when I was 10, I was all in, and then you found other interests. And so that's kind of what happened. And the love never faded. The love never faded, but me, just the physical aspect of it for me faded. And uh, so I just dove into something like video editing and uh, just being a father and a husband. Got you, got you. So, so what did you start filming first? Besides, like when you start working with recruit, was it a uh, football or basketball? No. <laughs> Thick chicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, thick chicks! Because dudes in this day, like uh, if, if you know Mike Privet, uh, not Mike Privet, but um, Mike, uh, what's Mike? The AD at Churchly. Mike could tell you mm -hmm. now. They'll be watching film, watching the game film. The next thing you know, you see a thick rump come across the screen. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I started, I started shooting uh, football first, Norfolk State, because I was the uh, video coordinator. Okay. Matter of fact, I just talked to Coach um, Forte the, uh, yesterday. So I started shooting football first, started shooting um, Norfolk State. Started shooting Norfolk State first, because uh, after I graduated, not after I graduated, but in my um, in my you know my fifth year there, that's when I started uh, shooting. I became the video coordinator, so I was doing football first. Then I got um, then it, everything back then just bled right into each other because I started shooting. I was a video coordinator at Norfolk State. Then I got a job at Wavy, and then um, so I had job security. So uh, started doing football. I was all into football. That's when I learned about this area's rich history in football uh -huh. because I didn't know at the time, but I came – the time I was at Norfolk State, you know, this area, you had Mike Vick and AI, and right before them was Ronald Curry. Yeah. Or after them. After them. He came after them, right? Ronald Curry is after AI, I believe, and Mike Vick is after all of them. Right, 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 right. Because uh, Ronald Curry was getting all the big hype at that time. Matter of fact, that's when they had to play the McDonald's All-American game at the Scope. And, um, so, but I wasn't really interested in high school because I was just coming from high school. Uh -huh. And I was just interested in college at the time. So uh, college, I started shooting um, Norfolk State. And then I started shooting a lot of the Washington Redskins. And I grew up. Not even liking the Redskins. But when your man at work said, yo, I got tickets to the game. You want to go shoot from the sideline or uh, media passes? Do you want to go shoot from the sideline? I was like, hell yeah. So my very first NFL game was the Giants and Redskins, and it was a night game at uh, FedEx Field. Man, that was the greatest experience of my life, <laughs> to have all to be on the field and having all those people. You know, I know they weren't there for me, yeah. but, you know, just to be – in that environment at that time, and I'm I'm what two to three years removed from college football, and I'm like, man, this could have been me. But you know, <clears throat> aside from the money, I really, really loved doing what I was doing. So football was first. Then I really didn't get into high school basketball until um, what year was that? Until you start working with the news. Yeah. But I'm trying to think. Vern Macklin. Whenever Vern Macklin went to Norcom, that's when I started. Because Vern Macklin and uh, Ben Finney was on the same team at Norcom uh -huh. until Vern transferred to uh, the military school. So I want to say up until that. If you can remember those days, then that's when I started shooting high school basketball. You still got that footage. I know that footage. Probably crazy. I posted it up on um, I posted it up on YouTube when I found it like two or three years ago. Okay. Um, Vern Macklin, it's Vern Macklin highlights and Ben uh, Ben Finney highlights, and uh, my Percy Harvin highlights is up there too. I posted those things like when I first found them and was able because when I was at CBS, I was able to um, go.
go from analog to digital. So yeah. once I did that, I just posted everything to YouTube so I could always find it. So <clears throat> all my all my old footage is up on YouTube already. Okay. Like, and one I don't have my converter now, but yeah, I, I used to post all my old videos straight to uh straight to YouTube from a from a DVD to YouTube. So it's all up there. Okay, okay. So uh since you've been recording high school, uh what's your favorite? Basketball, favorite football or basketball? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I know you told me before. You told me um, basketball is kind of like your your go to because it's more games. You know, monetary wise, it helps a lot. Yeah. Football is only one one game a, a week. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I was because right, I was heartbroken when they canceled the state championship. Yeah, I was just like, man, what am I gonna do now? <laughs> um, I would say that what the the best thing about football season truly is when the season start and you see all the guys that I played like high school football with, like William Black. Uh -huh. When the season start and um, I go to their games and I see his son no. or John Quinterly. When John Quinterly's son was in high school, uh, you go to their games. You see, you can see his son is like you know I I play with your father. Or Andre Nixon, uh, you know, like I play with your father. Now our sons are playing with each other and against each other. Uh, that's the dopest thing. And then it's like a reunion when football season starts. Because, you know. <clears throat> it definitely brings a lot of people out. Yeah, because after basketball, you don't, you don't see anybody for like two to three months, mm -hmm. four months. Then when August comes around, September comes around, that's when you begin to see them again. And it's, and it's like, I, I missed you, man. Where you been? And uh, that's what the, that's what I love about football is because football will always be a brotherhood, yeah. but basketball basketball is so unique because one that's how I got my start, and then two, just to see the individual play of some of these high school kids, and then you always got to remember, like man, this kid is only fifteen or sixteen years old and doing the things that they're doing out there, mm -hmm. like um. Ephraim Johnson out at Western Branch, uh, Jaden Epps at uh, Kings Fort, mm -hmm. and uh, all the other kids. And, you know, it's just amazing the, the court sense that they have at that age. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's, what, that's what makes basketball so unique. Football is more physical, more team. I think it's more team-oriented because uh, you need a block to get open or to get into the end zone. You need a quarterback to pass you the ball. You need somebody to be on defense. You need somebody to make sure they're doing their responsibility so you don't get scored on. Basketball is more individual where uh, it's, it's team-oriented as well, but you're always going to have that one guy that stands out on a team, and that's what makes basketball so much more unique, this, this, just to see um, the court savvy that these kids have and, and the plays that they make and, and the way they see the floor and run the floor. True. What 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 does it feel like when uh you get that highlight? You get that, you get that dunk, that, <laughs> that posted dunk, and you like, oh yes. What's that feel like? That's the first thing you do. You look around the single wall shooting, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and then you always uh, this uh, most of the time you're like, look how I got it. Uh, but photographers. Photographers, I love to see uh, the, the still images that they get from that because, yeah. you know, that's a moment that will always be trapped in time. Mm -hmm. You know, video is, is, is nice, but I still love the way, uh, like you said, on a fast break, you get them midair about to throw it down. You know, those are so nice. And when you finally get it, like this year, I didn't have that many dunks until I seen uh, Chauncey play. Chauncey, he's going to Wichita State. Not Wichita. Yeah, Wichita State, which is perfect for him because he's a wing, and that and it seems like Wichita is a run-and-gun team, like the old UNLV, where they almost the majority of their points comes on a fast break from that wing guy. And he's had the best highlight. He's had the best highlights for me this season. 
Jaden Epps has the most highlights, but <laughs> <laughs> Chauncey Jenkins has the best highlights because all his all his highlights are in game dunks. Mm-hmm. And since uh, Dorian was a Dorian wasn't really a dunker, he could dunk. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best dunker, though, was uh, without a doubt, in my opinion, was uh, T.I., Travis Ingram from North. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was, he was uh, heating it, man. That, he would throw it down at the drop of a dime. Yeah. And, yeah. Get and he could handle the rock, so you never and, knew when it was coming. And could handle the rock. Yeah. Uh, and then after him, I would say, um, what's his name? Uh, the kid that went to Lake Teller. Baron C. Brown. C. Baron. That's what I used to call him. C. Baron. <laughs> yeah. C. Brown. That's my man. And watching him develop from, because I didn't even, when he went to Norcom, I think that's when Norcom was winning the state championships. Uh huh. I think he was a freshman at the time. Yeah. Then he transferred over to Lake Teller his sophomore year. And he was like so shy. Then his junior year, you can, he was turning the curve. Uh-huh. But by his senior year, m- without a doubt, he was the best in this area. I mean, without a doubt, he yeah. had the he had the handle, and he, he didn't develop a jump shot because he could take you off the dribble. So there was really no need for him to stand around shooting a bunch of jump shots. If he could take you off the dribble, boom, he gonna take you off the dribble. And yeah. that team was just so well not put together, but mature. Because they have been playing together for so long, True. that's what I really liked True. about that team. And uh, but C. Brown, he won the best dunker, but he was the best all around player, all around big. Yeah. But without a doubt, Ti played point guard. <laughs> right at like six, five, six, six. I know. And it was just, and it was just like, and then when he came back the next year after he graduated, and he came back and how. He could just with ease flow up and down the court with the handle. And then now that he had the red shirt at um, NC State, so he should be out there this fall. And I can't wait to see, man. Um, <coughs> that, the, that, the coronavirus, I don't know. This is a crazy situation we in. It's just like you don't know. It's just like you don't know what's happening in the sports world, I feel like. You don't. You blind. And I, I know that that Jordan documentary last night had everybody eyes open. <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to comment on it, but I'm suspended on Facebook, <laughs> <laughs> so I gotta wait to get my views until next Saturday. But that was a really good documentary. <clears throat> uh, how, how do you feel? Do you feel like the games, like the basketball games in the seven five, are like getting more packed because of the the game footage we put out? You said, well, it's only, <clears throat> people only want to, people like what they like. Uh-huh. Like, um, and people only going to go see winners play. Like when, even when Lake Teller was on top, Lake Teller didn't have a packed house. And that was football and basketball. Uh-huh. That's because I think <clears throat> people in this area are so used to Lake Teller football winning, that they'd be like, ah, I'll catch him at the state championship. <laughs> <laughs> I but, like, Kingsport, every last, almost, the only game I went to a Lake uh, Kingsport game and could get in with ease, I think, was when they played Henrico. Oh, okay. That was about okay. the only game. But other than that, and they in the boonies, that game was – I guess they don't have nothing to do out there during basketball season. Because <laughs> all just about all they're getting done. And when they played at Norfolk State, that was the only time you could actually get into a Kingsford game. But uh-huh. other than that, you know, Wilson, 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 just about all their games were sold out. Yeah. And it's just a few games that people, like, really, really want to see. Like, if you missed the Kingsford and – um. The Kings Fork and what game was that? Was that Mitchville? Huh? Mitchville? Kings Fork. Yes, if you missed that game, you missed a hell of a game. <laughs> and that game was packed. The game started that game started at six, five thirty, I think. Five thirty six. That game was packed at like four o'clock. 
And so right. hopefully next year what they'll do, especially with Kings Fork, because if you don't get out there to Kings Fork early, you are not getting in the game. Yeah, the they uh, yeah. Jaden got that uh, LaMelo ball effect right now, so everybody wants to see him play. They're going to have to start putting it at a college gym or something. Yeah, Norfolk State. That's what I, I've been saying. I'm like, especially and especially during the playoff time. Yeah. Like, but these, <clears throat> everybody wants to see all these kids play. Uh -huh. So I believe they should have it either at the Scope or Norfolk State. The way they had it set up at Norfolk State was so sweet, man. You know, you got four games, boom. It's convenient. Is you know, you can get in, you can get out. You, it's two ways to get to Norfolk State. You know, uh -huh. and it's, traffic isn't an issue. Parking isn't an issue. It's just like uh, room isn't an issue. I feel like when the playoffs start, they should either have them at, you know, they should have them at the Scope, ODU, or uh, Norfolk State. Just have them right there. And that will give the whole area the chance to see all these kids come play. But I know these kids work all year round to have that fir those first two rounds at home. So, you know, and I, and I can understand that. But just from a, a fan's viewpoint, I would rather have it to where everybody can come see him play all at once. Did you ever – so I, I played for Tallwood in 07, and we played and we made regionals and all of that, and they had it at um, Churchland. Right. Did, was you ever recording when they uh, had the regionals and stuff at Churchland? Yeah. I used to get there because that, that was right around the uh, – Dorian Finney time, 06, 07. Okay. So, yeah, like I used to go up there and um, – because they used to have all the playoffs run through Churchland because Churchland was the only place that could actually uh, hold everybody. Yeah. So they used to hold everything at Churchland. And uh, I remember one year I went up there and couldn't get in, and I was mad because I drove way out there and couldn't get in the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that, that, that's what I wanted to talk about next, too. Have you ever had a problem – Getting on the baseline or getting in the gym. Because, you know, yeah. I, I mean, lately, I don't, I've been having that problem only at certain places, but not all. Usually everybody right. knows what I'm there for, but I don't know. It's right. like certain places, they still not accepting our media pass or they like, who is you? Or Because they personally don't know uh, you as a person. They feel like you're not media. Right. And – they're inundated with um, with young kids trying to get on the baseline, either to hang out or to shoot. So, you know, there's only there's only been one place that I've actually had a problem with that. But at the same time, I understand they got a job to do, and you know, you just move, just shoot, just do what you got to do, and get in and get out. Because you know, obviously, <laughs> they're having other issues in their life besides you being baseline so mm -hmm. I've had issues in the past and you know I don't I don't sweat it you know because like everybody got a job to do yeah, so yeah. you know you don't sweat it you just get what you can keep it moving you voice your opinion on your social media site and everybody see and everybody know what's happening so you know you just get what you got get what you get and you know, just move on just know everybody's not like that yeah, have you ever had to deal with that over and post something on social media and be like, come on, man? I've had, uh, but I didn't post it. I was just like, this dude's a dick. <laughs> 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 and, you know, next time you have to go out there, you look for him. The only reason why you looking for him is so you don't run into him. Yeah. So you just like, uh... <clears throat> You know, you know who you know who the dick is and the jerks. So, you know, you just hope and pray that eventually. First of all, your first question is: If you don't like people, if you don't like media coverage, why be an AD or whatever? You uh, know what I mean? It's like if you don't want to deal with people, just do something else. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's not like uh, I'm out here to uh, take advantage of these kids. So, you know, but, again, everybody not like you and me. Everybody don't move the same way we do. Uh -huh. So, you know, I I do what I can, and I don't pay them no mind, man. I just get my work done. 
And I just I, I just get it done and get it in and just watch. I just like watching my viewership. That's it. Yeah, I understand that. I just I guess I have a hard time dealing with it because if it's they feel like a lot of ads feel like if it's not a news camera, then you're not media. And that's what yeah. that's what bothers me because they they not understand it's a new wave of talent, it's a new wave of social media that everybody don't want to be on the news. I mean, if a, ki- a kid ain't calling. Uh, Wavy Ten to get his highlight so he can go to school. A kid gonna call us, you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> yeah. and like, plus, and plus, with the news, they get more more viewerships, but they don't cover as many games as we do. Yeah, we covered. They don't start covering basketball until I say late January, early February, because they're still in football mode, and yeah. plus they're gearing up for the Super Bowl. So they don't really pay any attention to basketball until the last leg in the playoffs. Look look at it. In December, there's no high school basketball. If you're watching those, there's no high school basketball. Why? Because you got the NFL playoffs and the NBA. And then they don't get into gear until – like I, I, when I talk to Parsons, Parsons, I'm, Parsons don't never get to any basketball game until after the Super Bowl. And now that's mid-February. Mm-hmm. So they have no coverage of basketball, unless it's um, unless it's somebody. They might do one game, might, but for the most part, nah. They not NBC or Wavy WTKR thirteen might thirteen because Brian Smith be on it thirteen mm-hmm. might, but other than that, nah. We uh, we cover more basketball between you and me. We cover more basketball in two weeks. Then all the news, all the news spots, and for the whole season, and and that's just two weeks. Yeah. How how is how um important it is to get your footage out like in a timely manner, like doing the media that we type we do to you. Well, I'm I'm always supposed to be. I'm all, I always try to get mine out at least the next day. That night, no, because I'm kind of meticulous with mine. Because yeah. I go home. And um, I'll do my post game and I'll actually <clears throat> go through all my footage and log all my footage. Like, um, say, for instance, if I'm shooting Indian River <clears throat> and um, I have to, I get, if I, I get my game footage and then I interview a coach and one player. So, and each interview is about a minute, a minute and a half. So I lay down my interview, then I go back through all my video. Each video is probably about a half is probably about a half hour. But going through it, you know, you got to go through Khalil layup, Khalil assist, Khalil steal, Khalil free throw, etc. And I'm going through each clip because I know <clears throat> I'm going to have to go back and reference those clips at some point in the future. So I go through each clip. So I usually get mines out, my video out, usually the next day. Might be two days. It depends on who else I shoot that night. Okay. So so uh so you do that so during the end of the season, like when we got all the time on our hands, like right now, you could just make highlight tapes and just type that kid's name in. Right. Well, they're all <clears throat> they're all in a folder, like Indian River first Western branch. <clears throat> they're all in a folder. So when I need to, so, so like if I'm doing a highlight for Khalil, I got close to 23, 24 games of Khalil Odom. So I'll go through, <clears throat> starting from the first game, everything that I see with his name, I'll go through because I know I've gone through all the footage, all 24 games I've seen. I've seen the game from beginning to end. So <clears throat> I start off with the first game. Every time I see Khalil, I take it. I put it in a folder, an, another folder, or into my editing system, and then I just go through each game like that. Then once, once I'm done with that game, I'll go ahead and I'll start editing it. Um, like Khalil threes, Khalil points in the paint, Khalil fast breaks, Khalil steals, Khalil uh, et cetera. And I do that for every highlight. That's why when you see most of my highlights, they're all grouped in like That's one section. Funny. Right. Like you'll have um, Khalil shooting threes to the right, Khalil shooting threes to the left, Khalil stills to the right, Khalil stills to the left, and so on and so on. But 
usually in each one, you was, before he does it, <clears throat> it is say in the bottom right hand corner what was about to happen, like uh, three point range, assists, points in the paint, et cetera. Nice, nice, nice. So, who over the years, who's uh, who's been some of your favorite people to record? I know you was at all Epps games this year. Yeah. Uh, my favorite over the years, Dorian, Sebron, the whole day Teller squad, mm-hmm. Janiah Quinterly, PA when they get to the playoffs because <laughs> the stuff they do during the regular season, that's just like somebody need to call CPS the way they be beating up on them girls. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think who my all-time favorite is. I think my all-time favorite would have to be um, – I guess Percy Harden, mm. because that was when I really started shooting, and he was just such a, f- a phenom at the time yeah. that I had never seen anything like that, except for my man who I grew up with, who name was Damian Brown, is Damian Brown. I mean, somebody who could just tilt an entire football field in their favor with three steps. Thank you. Mm. Three steps. <laughs> <laughs> And they tilt the whole field to their favor. Yeah. You're not going to catch them. You're not going to touch them. And he usually yeah, taking it the distance. Yeah. And my man Damian was like that in high school. And then when I seen Percy play like that, I was just Sorry. in awe. Because it was, here is this kid, 15, 14, 15 years old at the time, just, just, just totally annihilating everybody, everything and everybody that was in front of him. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just wish at that time that I was – I really wasn't into football until I think his senior season because his junior season, that's when they went up to Richmond, not Richmond, but UVA. And he had like what? 500 yards of total offense, like pump returns, kick returns, pass catch, run, everything. I was like, geez. And this is, I think all of this is before the half. So then the next year, um, I really started getting into football and then I under started understanding the teams that were strong and the teams that um, that weren't so strong. So I basically started off at Lake Teller because Lake Teller was an Eastern District powerhouse. And that was the year Cam was there too. Cam Chancellor was there too. Um, so I started working with them, Cam and uh, Dyree McCain and uh, running back Williams. I forgot his last name, his first name, Sutton Williams. But – I started shooting those guys at first. And to see Dyree go from, you know, standout right receiver to state championship coach, that art, that arch, you know, it, 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 it makes me feel good because I remember when he was in high school trying to get it done to being a high school coach and getting it done. Yeah. And um, all, of that was, all of that was around the same time. And then, um, yeah, yeah, without a doubt, Purse was my, my was was my favorite guy to watch play, mm-hmm. and then uh, Vern Macklin, and then right after Vern Macklin, I think it was a uh, who. I forgot because it was a, it was a big gap between Vern Macklin. I guess it had to be Dorian Finney next, Dorian Finney, mm-hmm. and then uh, Ti. I take that back. Ti, my favorite guy, because <laughs> Ti was not only was he. Great, high, great for highlights, but he was great for an interview. If you go back and you look at my interviews with him, you hear me laughing all the time because because Ti Ti is a character, man. That yeah. guy's a character, yeah. and um, yeah, I would say Ti and Purse were always my favorites, and uh, Jaden Epps. I, I, again, that's another guy I've seen. Uh, Jamar Hawkins put me on to him. When they uh, won the middle school championship back in the day, yeah, they, I that school. Day, and he was going crazy, <laughs> right? And look who was on that team. It was Jaden, uh-huh. Jelani, and Malik Newton, <laughs> all on the same squad, middle school squad. Man. And so it's just like to see that's that's the best part of the, uh, of doing what we do, watching those kids. From, and they grow. They still right. The, watching their grow, they still babies, but watching them from middle school, just like Janiah Corner, watching her from middle school to dominating on the varsity level, it, it just lets you know their level of intensity, how they bring it each year, and how they've gotten <clears throat> how they've gotten better each year. 
Yeah. So uh, if I fill up a mall in, I love seeing a mall play. <laughs> um, have you ever been accused of like showing favoritism to any schools or kids? <laughs> yup. I do. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. I'm not going. You know. <clears throat> I like to see teams win. I and sometimes mm-hmm. I should be subjective, but I'm really objective because if I'm coming out there to see you play, I'm sorry, I don't want to see you struggle going two for twenty. No. And uh, somebody posted that. What year was that? Like uh, somebody on. Oh, it was the year Katron Allen when Katron Allen was playing in um, at uh, Norview Middle. He was a beast. I almost, I've almost forgot about him. To see his arch from middle school to being that IG, IMG, that's 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 phenomenal. Mm-hmm. And knowing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and knowing that I had footage of him in his eighth grade year to watch his dominance on offense and defense, man. But yeah, some kid actually put up there, um, "Why you want his job?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, be nice. <laughs> what you mean? I ain't coming to watch you play. You get uh, 10 touches for 10 yards? No, my brother. That's so, cool. and plus, you know, if you nice, I want to put a I want to put a spotlight on that. Yeah. And you know, I know every every kid isn't going to be a Percy or Kachan Allen or Jaden Epps or or something like that, but you know, I will come out there and shoot you. But for the most part, um, I'm sorry. I got to go. I got to go where I know the free money is. Mm-hmm. Basically, the where I know I'm going to get good highlights, good video, good post-game interviews. Uh, so it's not favoritism. It's uh, just going where you know you're going to get good results. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I know when I first came in the game, probably like four or five years ago, I think four years ago, you know, I've seen you on a uh, baseline. You was came in, welcome, so what's up, how you doing, who you shooting for, you know, the, the basic questions. What would you say to like, uh, as we started filming last year, you see more and more kids or more and more media uh, coming to the game. What, what, what would be some advice that you would give to a newcomer that starts shooting in the 75 seminary? Shoot everything, shoot as much as you can, uh, speak to everybody, mm-hmm. uh, always be on good terms, um, make sure you always got good lighting, make sure you always got good video, video quality, mm-hmm. video quality is the key. Um, don't be a dick. Just, <laughs> if, you get a, <clears throat> if you get a press pass, yeah. And shooting, and somebody comes say you're not supposed to be there. Just don't argue. Just move, because again, you, the way that the way this field work, you never know who you crossing paths with, because um, that guy who's being a dick to you, if he says something to somebody else, then they can ruin your credentials. Yeah. So you know, just. Just if somebody, if somebody, if, even if you don't know him and you know that guy's been a dick for no reason, just, you know, just go with the flow. Just go. If you can't shoot baseline, just go shoot from up top. Shoot from up top, but shoot really, really tight. So you, so there's no denying that you can shoot from any angle. Baseline is sweet, but um, I think my best game this year was um, Wilson and Norview. And not because I had to shoot from up top, but it was because it was Wilson at that time. I think they were undefeated, and they were playing Norview, which only had one loss. And I didn't want to play. I didn't want to. I wanted to make sure I got everything, even though that was a really good game. And I put my extended lens on, and all my highlights of that game came out perfect because it's just like you can see the one on one, the individuals putting their moves on before they went to them, and then when they finished at the rim, you widen out so you can see the aspect ratio. So um, my advice to everybody coming out, man, just shoot, shoot, and just be kind and nice because you never know when you might even need something from somebody. Because I know I've hit you up a few times about video, and you hit me up about video. 
And yeah. I'm like, I don't care. I push my video out. If you want to use all my video, use it. That just means more people are going to see it. And then when I see it, I'm like, oh, like on uh, <laughs> Jaden Epps, Jaden Epps mini doc, and I see my video out there, uh -huh. man, I was, I was so happy to see that. <laughs> yeah. Usually everybody always asks me, like, if they want to, like, a lot of the IG kids, they'll be yeah. like, hey, can I use your footage? I'm like, sure, just give me, just make sure you give me credit, but keep do your thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I don't even sometimes I don't is is when I see my video being used somewhere else, I'm like, there it is. <laughs> I'm just it is. I know it. <laughs> but yeah, man, I appreciate I appreciate the uh conversation, man. I hope uh you and your family doing well and I hope to see you on the baseline in the future, man. Yeah, you too, man. Stay safe out there. <laughs>